Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Andrei. In this video, I'll talk about long chain, uh, Mistral, and uh, uh, getting a structured JSON output from this LLM model. Uh, in my previous video, I was explaining a similar topic, uh, running on top of uh, Llama 2, 13 bits, and using Haystack and uh, v um, uh, vector database. Uh, in this video, I'll focus on uh, Mistral, long chain, and uh, uh, yeah, and <clears throat> we'll be using um, just a file-based uh, face, uh, face um, uh, vector database. Okay, so let's see uh, uh, the application. And yeah, first of all, uh, let's see the prompt that I'm using for this application. This is the actual prompt. And uh, uh, yeah, it's quite uh, basic. And, uh, you know, this option... Uh, in long chain where you could specify inside the prompt that uh, you would like to uh, get uh, JSON output and you want to format it in a certain way, then this is another way uh, you could uh, define some output parsers with long chain to uh, transform the result into the JSON structure and, uh, and so on. You could also use Pydantic with long chain to uh, validate the output to make sure it uh, conforms to the certain structure and so on. Uh, I did a couple of these tests and um, yeah, from the practical point of view, uh, I was not happy with uh, the way how it works using those output parsers because in many cases, Link chain, uh, the LLM, so the output which comes uh, in, in one request, it could be uh, properly structured. In another request, LLM would return uh, in, invalid structure and then output parser would fail and so on. So, um, uh, what I found more reliable, at least uh, at this point of time, uh, is to send the prompt to LLM, which would explicitly tell that uh, I want to get. Uh, output uh, formatted in a certain way and uh, provide the keys that want to, I want to be included into the output. And uh, I'll show you how uh, how the, uh, those kind of prompts would look like. Okay, so uh, over here I'm um, using uh, for the uh, ingest data to produce embeddings. I'm using Hugging um, uh, Face embeddings and I'm using uh, uh, MP net base v2 embeddings. So that works for that. And embedding is stored in a local file storage in a vector database uh, uh, using uh, uh, vector store uh, files. It, it works uh, quite well, uh, I, I would say. Um, I cannot complain about that. Okay, and if you look into the config, then we see that uh, in this case, uh, uh, chunk size I, did, I defined uh, 300. Uh, usually, based on specific data you're working with, uh, you need to adjust the chunk size. Based on this example, when I have a single page invoice document, it's around 1000 characters. I found it works better if it, to split it around 300 characters uh, so that um, when the query would come and it would go to embeddings first, so embedding uh, would uh, the, the the vectors vector storage would uh, return um, let's say multiple chunks and those multiple chunks or maybe one chunk would uh, smaller chunk would be sent to LLM to extract uh, to do the final extraction. It works better. It works better instead of um, uh, having one single let's say big chunk of one thousand characters and sending this chunk to the uh, big chunk to a database. So, so it works better to split into small chunks, at least based on my test for, for, for this example. Okay, the LLM is loaded using um, uh, C transformers from long chain because we're using long chain in this, in this uh, example. And if you look into the uh, wrapper, we're using um, long chain retrieval question answering uh, uh, chain to uh, basically interact with LLM. Okay, and let's see the actual the the prompts. And let, just a moment, let's see. Um, over here under wrapper, so this is the main function. We create embeddings, uh, then we stop LM, we, we do set up a QA prompt over here, and uh, uh, we build retrieval chain uh, over here. And yeah, this is also a, a way to test uh, 
maybe I'll describe it in the next video to test uh, and see what kind of um, information is being sent uh, to the LLM, uh, which is retrieved from the vector store. Okay, so uh, this is the, the the main point of this video is to show you how um, you get uh, you can get JSON and. Uh, later in in my future videos, I'll also research uh, how to use uh, some additional libraries with Haystack, for example, to get predefined uh, JSON. So this, there are other ways as well. But I think the simplest one, at least with long chain, is that when you ask the question, you also uh, add information saying like format response is following using the uh, the style which uh, would indicate that you want to get back the JSON. And I specify the key invoice number. And since in this case I want to get single value, I just use those curly brackets. Uh, if uh, there are some other examples where I get uh, uh, multiple values, then I use um, uh, like square brackets. And this is uh, the response I get for this prompt. And uh, the time is quite fast. This is on local CPU. Uh, 33 seconds and uh, using C transformers to interact with the LLM and uh, in my previous example with uh, 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 Lama 2 uh, I think it, I was using 13 bits uh, and it was uh, way longer and uh, it was kind of working through the uh, Lama CPP. It was, uh, for some reason, it was taking longer, but it, it could be, I need to debug more and see maybe it's also related to the vector storage. Maybe files vector storage is uh, faster and returns response faster, so I'll need to check that. Okay, the, another example, I'm getting invoice date this way. Uh, it works nicely and then there are option, this option to get uh, multiple values like here I'm getting client name, address and uh, tax ID formatted in this way and this is the response. Uh, what else then? I'm getting um, uh, three values over here, uh, seller name, complete address and tax ID so it's similar to this request. Here I'm getting client name, here I'm getting seller name and data is correctly returned with proper JSON and in this case uh, what is what you get is a string but uh, it looks like um, JSON basically and it's e very easy to convert it to the to the actual JSON so it doesn't matter that actually whatever is returned is string. Okay then uh, getting IBAN it also returns nicely and uh, it even works, uh, I think this request uh, works correctly, where I say receive two values, net price and gross for, for the second invoice item from the table. The enter trust correctly, and uh, this runs on Mistral 7b uh, model. I did a few tests with um, uh, Zephyr Beta, which is also 7b, which is supposed to be a uh, better model than Mistral, but for the data extraction tasks, uh, it was I, I didn't notice any actual improvement comparing to the Mistral. So for the data extraction tasks like that, it's uh, very similar. Okay, then another example, um, getting uh, gross for value for each invoice item from the table. And there are four uh, items in the table and I get back only values for two. Uh, I guess this is related to the constraint of the smaller context window of uh, Mistral and it's not able to get the full answer, but it returns correctly uh, like a, a half of the answer here. And the same with uh, item descriptions. It returns just two, but there are four, so probably also related to the context window. And by the way, it's interesting that if I don't specify explicitly that I want to return data in a JSON format, then I get, uh, I think, all four values. So um, when with this added complexity in the request to get uh, JSON structure back for some reason, um, the request, uh, it, it's not able to produce as much information as uh, just with the plain request. Okay, another case is uh, we we ask to retrieve uh, uh, total gross worth and uh, it's correct again. And it also works with three different values located in different uh, areas on the page, like total gross worth, invoice number, and invoice date, and uh, it returns proper JSON over here. Okay, so uh, this is a quick video to uh, give you some practical information how you would uh, get in a simple way JSON out of the long chain for uh, Mistral model which you interact with uh, through C transformers on a local CPU. 
So thanks so much. You can see you next time. Bye.